For a region where civilization has not even arrived yet, electricity is an extremely basic resource for survival, especially when you need light and heat. Interestingly, this was one of the huge problems of the Soviet Union back in the 1950s. With the firm intention of implementing reforms in search of economic modernization and improving the quality of life for its citizens, they launched a broad and ambitious development program for the far north, a region where it was extremely difficult to survive in winter. At the same time, the world was waiting with anticipation for one of the novelties of that era, nuclear energy. Initially developed for purely military purposes, the potential of this energy source quickly made it the goal of those who were looking for a way to generate electricity much more efficiently and certainly economically. It was the Soviet Union in June 1954 that succeeded in connecting its Obninsk nuclear power plant to the electricity grid, becoming the first in the world to do so. Although they seemed like isolated events, both occurrences piqued the curiosity of Soviet engineers, who quickly had the idea of finding a way to bring nuclear energy to these inhospitable regions. Thus, the TES project was born, with the intention of being able to provide energy resources in any corner of the planet, even if it was in practically uninhabitable regions. The first mention of a mobile nuclear power plant dates back to 1955. This concept is attributed to the then Minister of Medium Machine Building, also known as the Atomic Minister, Efim Pavlovich Slavsky. The idea was so well received that some vehicle production plants soon began to present their proposals. For its part, the Yaroslavl locomotive production plant presented a couple of proposals, TES-1 and TES-2. They were relatively compact machines, but with enough power to supply electricity to civilian and military facilities in the far north in Siberia. However, both proposals were designed to be transported by rail, which immediately led to a huge problem. For a region where establishing an urban settlement was difficult, not to mention impossible, building rail infrastructure just to be able to transport a mobile nuclear plant was something totally out of the question. So both proposals were rejected almost immediately. Nonetheless, these proposals served to steer the project toward a prototype with a mobile structure, but on wheels, or alternatively, on tracks. Thus, Minister Slavsky ordered the participation of specialists from the Institute of Physics and Power Engineering of the almost newly created Obninsk nuclear power plant in the well-known TES-3 project, whose acronym in Russian translates to Transportable Power Plant. Work only began in November 1956, but given the enormous interest and the magnitude of the funding behind the project, the work advanced with great speed. By 1957, the progress obtained was formalized with the creation of a mobile nuclear power plant concept in a model, which later allowed for the construction of a functional prototype to begin. To make this prototype work, the chassis of the then most robust tank in the Soviet Union was used as a base, the T-10. Even so, some changes were necessary, such as extending the tracks to 10 rollers, in addition to increasing the track gauge to preserve an optimal level of soil compaction. These changes were necessary since the entire installation, not including the chassis, weighed around 200 tons in total, which were moved by a quartet of turbocharged V12 diesel engines, each with 750 horsepower. Of course, these specifications made the TES-3 not exceptionally fast, reaching only 15 kilometers per hour, although a mobile nuclear power plant would certainly be the last machine on the planet to need to move in a hurry. This station was divided into four independent modules. The first module housed the dual circuit, water-cooled nuclear reactor. In the second module, the pumps, steam generators, and the rest of the primary radioactive circuit equipment were installed. The third module was equipped with the turbine and the generator, while the fourth module contained the control and monitoring console, to manage to create such a small nuclear reactor, the engineers worked on unifying the technologies and solutions they had already tested during the development of their own nuclear plants and the reactors installed in submarines. This naturally caused the entire project to be classified as top secret. As for the most important problem in nuclear engineering, radiation, it was solved in a quite unique way. The TES-3 integrated a three-level protection scheme for the reactor. First, lead glass was used to encase the reactor, which had to be correctly installed during transport and for repairs or maintenance. Second, the reactor was surrounded by a tank full of boric acid, which protects the tank's chassis from induced radioactivity during the operation of the nuclear power plant. 
The last and main protection against radiation was literally achieved with soil. For this, the ground was prepared before starting operation by digging underground trenches where the first and second modules, which contained all the radioactive equipment, would be buried. Additionally, a covering was installed using reinforced concrete slabs. After the construction of the first prototype, it was immediately sent for field tests. The operation process consisted of transporting the four modules on regular cargo platforms, which were then transported to the train station closest to the operation site. Being self-propelled, they arrived at the required location under their own power. After entrenching the corresponding modules, the personnel connected the necessary pipes and cables and finally pressed the power button. If everything was done correctly, light and heat were generated immediately. Aside from the size and the total energy produced, the operating principle of this reactor was totally similar to that of a common nuclear power plant. Surprisingly, the TES-3 confirmed its viability in its first tests. With a moderate consumption of up to 14 grams of enriched uranium per day, the nuclear power plant could produce 1.5 megawatts of energy, achieving an impressive operational autonomy of 250 days, more than enough for a winter shift. While this energy was sufficient for a small settlement or an expedition, it was estimated that the energy production could be raised to reach 2 megawatts, simply by improving some components. Furthermore, the appeal of this peculiar way of energizing remote areas was in the possibility of folding the modules to be able to refuel the reactor, as well as simply deploying them to another point where they were needed. Although the specific details of why this project was stopped are not known, in the end, there were more people worried about a problem with these mobile nuclear plants than there were optimists who could continue with these projects. Unfortunately, in the mid-1960s, the authorities of the Soviet Union quickly distanced themselves from the revolutionary ideas they initially had for a project of this kind, abruptly suspending funding. Since 1969, the TES-3 remained unused at the Obninsk nuclear power plant, existing but with a truly uncertain fate. A last glimmer of hope arose in the mid-1980s, when one of the four original modules was equipped with a turbine to be sent to the Kamchatka region in order to be used in a geological exploration. The TES-3 project is a testament to human ingenuity. Conceived in the cradle of Russian nuclear engineering, the Obninsk plant, as a bold response to bring life to the freezing and remote regions of the far north in Siberia. However, its history also serves as a reminder that an innovative idea, no matter how brilliant it may seem, is not enough to guarantee success. Although the prototype proved to be viable, the project did not manage to consolidate itself, being left forgotten. Currently, the possibility of honoring this technological legacy is being debated, either by creating a historical monument or by transforming the original prototypes into accessible study pieces for exhibitions at the world's first nuclear power plant.